Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about Super Mario Land, 1989 game, um, which was a launch title for the original Game Boy. And for a lot of people, it was a pack-in that came with the Game Boy, um, that or Tetris. Um, it's one of the two main games that I think a lot of people associate with the original Game Boy. It was a black and white game, as all Game Boy games were. It's original Game Boy had this green uh, color palette so the game is these four shades of green um, which is not the most appealing later they had the Game Boy Pocket where you could see it more in a true black and white and then um, eventually the Game Boy Color which gave you a nicer kind of color palette to it um, where you could change tints and then um, kind of the nicest way to play is with the Super Game Boy that lets you um, do different color palettes. Uh, it's got a nice initial default palette which is what um, the footage you're watching today is going to be on. So this is one of my kind of favorite go-to old Game Boy games uh, for a number of reasons but it's very nostalgic for me. It was a game that before I have my own game system my uncle, who um, I wouldn't normally associate with games, he had a Game Boy with this, Tetris, Tennis, um, I think a couple other ones. But those are the ones I remember playing uh, quite a bit. And the Game Boy was such a phenomenon that non-gamers would often buy it, kind of similar to what would later go on with the Wii. So this game takes a lot of direct inspiration from the original Mario Brothers for the NES. And this is basically a Game Boy altered version of that game in a lot of ways but it also is very different in a lot of ways um, I think one of the main reasons is that Shigeru Miyamoto the creator of Mario was not as directly involved with this one it was um, created primarily by Gunpei Yokoi, which is the man who created the Game Boy and he brought a lot of different ideas to it that haven't really appeared in any other Mario games which sets this one apart in a lot of ways and makes it worth looking back on and worth playing. Like many early Game Boy games this game had kind of small squish graphics. They were still learning the system and learning the best way to to graphically represent the games and this represents a period where a lot of things are very small um, similar to like Batman the game and you see that small Batman sprite and how it's kind of different. Um, since it was made for a portable system one of the ideas at the time was that the games would be shorter experiences so the whole game can be completed in about half an hour. The controls are very similar to other Mario games where you build momentum and jump you can correct yourself mid-air. I think it's got a slightly more slippery set up to it than the original Mario Brothers but it's it's very close it just feels a little bit off in some ways and there's also a tiny lag between when you push and when you jump that you have to get used to but other than that I think the controls are very uh, spot-on it's not the most difficult game especially once you've played it enough um, you'll you'll get good enough at it that you can make it through in a playthrough it doesn't have a save system or password, so you do have to beat the entire game at once, which makes that half hour playtime um, more appealing. And once you do beat the game, it does have a hard mode you can play um, if you wanted to replay it with a little more challenge. Unlike other Mario games, this does not take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, which is where most of the games are set. This takes place in a different new kingdom called uh, Sarasaland. I believe is how you say it. And it does not involve Princess Peach or Bowser, which of course are the primary players in all the other Mario games. Instead, the princess is Princess Daisy. So if you ever wondered where this kind of Peach doppelganger with the brown hair and the yellow dress comes from, this is the game where she first appeared. The antagonist of the game is not Bowser, it is an alien named Tatanga who has kidnapped Princess Daisy. And Tatanga is kind of interesting 
He would only appear in one other game, the direct sequel to this, Super Mario Land 2, which was a very different game and did not incorporate much from this original game. There are enemies that are similar to the Mario Brothers game, but different in ways that set them apart. There are piranha plants and bullet bills. Instead of Goombas, you have Goombos, which function essentially similar to uh, Goombas, but look a little different. You have bombshell Koopas, which are very different than Koopa Troopas in that you cannot hit their shells and kick them. You jump on them and they will explode. As far as power-ups, you do have the Super Mushroom, and you also have a Fire Flower, except this Fire Flower does not function exactly the same way because you don't shoot fireballs in this game. You shoot super balls, and these work a little bit differently. You can only shoot one at a time, and it ricochets off walls and platforms. You will not be able to shoot a second one unless it hits an enemy or until it times out and disappears. You can also use these super balls to ricochet into places that Mario can't reach to pick up coins. There are invincibility stars, although there's a little bit of difference in that they don't bounce on the ground until you pick them up. They fly off the screen if you miss them, so you only have a brief time to grab them. It also plays a very different song when you have them, so that's kind of interesting. Instead of 1-Up Mushrooms, you will get hearts for your life, and I think this was done since the Game Boy did not have a color palette so it could distinguish between the Super Mushrooms. The game has four kingdoms, and each one has three levels to them. The four kingdoms uh, are very different from each other, which is nice to offer some variety. There's the Birabuto Kingdom, the Muda Kingdom, the Eastern Kingdom, and the Chai Kingdom. So the Birabuto Kingdom has sort of an Egyptian flair to it. They have enemies like flies and bee type enemies. There's sphinx type enemies and the boss is a sphinx type creature that's similar to Bowser where he rests on a bridge that you can either jump over and make collapse or if you have the uh, powerball upgrade you can shoot him with powerballs. The Muda Kingdom is a water themed kingdom where you have jumping skeletal fish, you've got um, seahorse like creatures that shoot, you've also got octopus kind of creatures, and there are also these robotic creatures that are somewhat like UFOs. The Eastern Kingdom is themed after Easter Island, so you have Easter Island type head enemies running around in addition to spiders and um, rocks. The Chai Kingdom is an Asian themed kingdom and this one has enemies like snakes. You've got these enemies that look like traditionally dressed Asian men that jump around. In addition to the regular platforming level there's also a submarine level in the Muda Kingdom which is where you'll fight the seahorse boss. And this is fun for a little variety and plays similar to a side-scrolling shooter. The last level of the game is also a different style level where you're flying in an airplane and that's where you'll eventually fight the boss, um, Tatanga. I like that they tried something different with these and didn't just do everything exactly like you would expect from a Mario Brothers game. The music in the game is very different than other Mario games, but it's very catchy. To me, it's very iconic and nostalgic. This is one of the first games that I have any memory of beating. Um, I believe it is the first game that I ever finished to completion, so it holds kind of a special place in my heart for that. The end theme really uh, is one of the best end credit themes I think there is. There's just something about it that when you hear it, you feel very rewarded, and it's got a kind of calming effect, and uh, simultaneously for me, it has a way of really taking me back to when I first beat the game as a kid. 
I'd really like to see a updated version of this game where they use some more modern aesthetics to recreate it. I'd also like to see some of the unique things from this game implemented in other Mario games. I think that'd be interesting. So while it's not one of the longer Mario games, and it's not really one of the more challenging Mario games, I think it is definitely one that you should experience. Um, it's different enough that you won't play any other Mario game or any other game that's exactly like it. Uh, the music's unique, the enemies are unique, the settings are unique. There are enough unique elements that make it definitely worth playing.